and this has got to be one of the most insane taser stories we've ever covered. Just listen to this. Two Texan police officers are being sued for using a taser to shock a man who was having a seizure, causing the 50-year-old to suffer a heart attack and permanent brain damage. Scott Sheely filed a federal lawsuit complaint last week in Austin, Texas, requesting a jury trial against two police officers who shocked him with a taser. In May, Sheely unsuccessfully asked for a settlement of at least $1.5 million to cover the costs of medical fees, attorneys, and emotional damages. So basically what happened was the guy's brother calls for medical assistance after Sheely starts having a seizure there on the ground. For some reason... I don't know why they send the police round first instead of the ambulance. And as he's convulsing, as he's having the seizure, the police not trying to help him. They're trying to handcuff him because <laughs> I, don't, I guess that having a seizure is resisting arrest as if they had any reason to arrest him in the first place. So even as his brother's screaming that the guy's having a seizure, the cops, you know, they've got their knee stuck in his back. They're squashing his head up against the sofa. They're cuffing him. And they're starting to taser him over and over again. Even after they've handcuffed him, they still continue to taser him because he's having a seizure. He's writhing around on the ground. These dumb cops think that he's somehow still resisting them. But if you think that the horror ends there, then think again. Because the paramedics then arrive, thank God, you would think. But no, they actually inject him with drugs that cause the guy to have a cardiac arrest. So, you know, he's already having a seizure. He's been tased over and over again. And now he's having a heart attack. And it's, it's just a miracle that he didn't die because it took him 11 minutes to revive him after he'd stopped breathing. So now, basically, as a result, he's got, obviously, the emotional damage must be mammoth. He's got permanent brain damage, and he's suing the cops, uh, and he deserves every penny that he can get. But again, you know, protect and serve at their finest once again. It makes you wonder where on earth they're finding these cops and what they're training them with. Well, we know what they're training them with. They're training them that the American people are their enemy, that the American people are all potential terrorists and should be treated with the utmost suspicion. So that's why we continue to hear incidents such as this one. AP Seth Borenstein at it again claims global warming means more Antarctic ice. Meet the new consensus, the opposite of the old consensus. This is Mark Moreno, Climate Depot. AP Seth Borenstein is at it again. Bornstein continues to serve in his role as chief apologist for the man-made global warming industry. This time in an October 10 AP article, Bornstein is working overtime to explain away record Antarctic sea growth, uh, ice growth in 2012. As man-made global warming morphs more and more into unfalsifiable science and, quote, extreme weather claims, expect more tortured spin from activists like Bornstein. In a prime example of how the warmest cannot get their story straight, Borenstein's article turns former Vice President Al Gore's Antarctic claims and 60 Minutes claims on their head. So basically this article documents how the claim that record Antarctic sea ice growth in 2012 actually validates global warming science completely contradicts previous claims and studies made by other global warming alarmists. Because the previous studies, which are cited in this article, state that low sea ice in the, Act in the Antarctic was caused by global warming. Now the alarmists tell us that, you know, it's record high sea ice in the Antarctic that is also the result of global warming. So basically everything is a result of man-made global warming. You know, hot weather, cold weather, dry weather, wet weather, no volcano eruptions, multiple volcano eruptions, no hurricanes, lots of hurricanes. It's all your fault, and all you need to do is pay that carbon tax directly to Al Gore, to the carbon trading systems that he owns, and uh, that's going to fix it all. And whatever the weather does, it's your fault, and you've got to pay that tax. But because of all this mealy mouth propaganda and with um, belief in man-made global warming collapsing, the UN, as we've covered before, made that decision two years ago in their own blueprint to rebrand global warming as population control. We saw that just yesterday with the Bill Maher story. 
So now they're using contrived fears about overpopulation, which the UN's own population division figures show that by 2050, we're going to be in a depopulation crisis. They've replaced man-made climate change fears with that contrived fraud. Because as this story illustrates, um, the global warming mantra has collapsed because these scientists, especially after Climategate and the, all, all the other scandals, their own reports now completely contradict not only the science, but also each other. And they're scrambling to such a degree uh, that it's all blowing up in their face and confidence, belief in man-made global warming continues to collapse. Washington could become first state to OK pot sales. This is out of the Associated Press. Washington state is on the verge of becoming the first in the nation to let adults over 21 buy taxed inspected marijuana at state licensed shops. It might not clear up more than a decade of confusion that resulted from the state's medical marijuana law or reverse the proliferation of dispensaries. But supporters say passing initiative 502 on November 6 could make drug laws more reasonable prevent thousands of arrests a year and bring Washington hundreds of millions of dollars to help pay for schools, health care and basic government services. So great news there in terms of ending the drug war, which, of course, has nothing to do with fighting drugs, nothing to do with reducing the dependency on drugs, because that was never the goal. It's about controlling the supply and the sale of drugs. And of course, the feds are fighting against this um, initiative 502 tooth and nail because it represents a threat to their prison industrial complex which is built on profits from the illegal drug trade so we'll continue to monitor that story visit infowars.com and prisonplanet.com when you're on the site you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast there's also a free iphone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want (laughs) 